went ahead and striped the headstock with uh, black paint, um, just because there's only the one stripe, and I wanted to see what it would look like without doing any prep to the uh, red and white foundation. Uh, there's a substantial lip between where the red is and where just the like the, the base uh, white is. So not a huge deal if I can use clear coat to uh, even that out, but I also don't want a you know ton of the clear coat on the thing. Um, and I don't intend on clear coating the whole neck, like everywhere that I've painted on the neck. But uh, anyway, this is actually a uh, can of black paint that I have had for something like 10 years. So the trick with keeping spray paint is you hold the can upside down and uh, just spray. every time you're done with it, just hold it upside down and spray it. And it lets uh, any paint out that's in the nozzle, clears the nozzle out, and then you uh, don't have the can clogging up on you. So this turned out nicely, although I've got way more overspray under the tape, so that's I'm going to have to clean that up. That's going to require a bit of uh, finesse. It's either that or tape it off again and paint it with white and red, but that's probably more work. So I can just hit that with sandpaper and start wearing it down really lightly. Um, another problem I'm having with this is... Uh, I should have used gloss white paint. This being a satin finish, um, when I'm sanding the red, it's leaving pink sort of debris, super fine debris, in the white areas. And then I have to hit those with, um, I'm using a magic eraser, science's latest miracle. And it seems to do an all right job, but once I start working in an actual large area that may turn out to be a problem. The, the body, I haven't done anything with it yet except did a stripe repair. This stripe was way too thick so it wrapped around the front and back and it just didn't look right at all. So um, I used the really thin tape and then ooh, chunk left and then masked where my original stripes were and then hit it with the red paint. So that worked, but it didn't do a clean job. Again, this is relatively thick uh, layer of red paint now, where all these are. There's a huge lip. Uh, there's actually a big bump there. So I'm just going to hit this with sandpaper anyway, and that should clear that off. But I have, when I was working on it, I also uh, got rid of where those tiny little red triangles were. I just thought, I'm an experiment. I want to see what that looks like. And getting rid of that, that's where I saw the pink. Um, oops, I'm out of frame. Uh, <clears throat> so the, these are the spots that I got rid of the those other little wee triangles. So anyway, it's going to take a bit of touch up to clean this up, but uh, I think that's still going to be fine. You're not going to notice. It's not going to look like a patch job. And worst case scenario, as has always been the case, I can just strike the whole thing and start over with a fresh coat of white base paint. Anyway. Moving on to, uh, I'll clean this up. I gotta mask this, well, I'm gonna sand it first to uh, deal with some of the pump, bumps in the red paint, smooth out these lines a tiny bit, and do a bit of the red-white relicking uh, before I move on to the black layer. So we'll see how that goes. First, a very light relicking on the headstock here. This is 220 paper, I just wanna see. Perfect. I just want to bring up the white around the edges of the headstock. Getting a bit of that pink effect. You can see it on the paper. But it doesn't look bad. Maybe it only does that when I wet sand. There's 
no real science to this. Just gonna hit all the edges. I'm not looking for absolute perfect uniformity. Just trying to make it look natural. I do the clear I'm just going to hit everything with the uh, thousand probably uh, just to take some of the peaks down the way the paint gets applied all right good stuff uh, I'm also going to need to make a um, the logo the Kramer logo uh, and you do that with this clear it's watermark paper it's called you get it at a craft store I had to eBay it from China because all the craft stores in my area stopped carrying it. And uh, you print on it. Mine happens to be laser printer paper, so I got to go to my dad's place to do that. I don't have a laser, or I don't have a inkjet printer. Um, print the logo, and then you cut it out. No, before you cut it out, you spray it with this acrylic. Same stuff I'm using uh, as my clear coat. Just spray it with clear coat because the watermark paper itself is super fragile. So uh, spray it to make it rigid, and then it's sort of adhesive, and you soak it to make the paper come off, and then just stick it down. I've done it once before, I got a really good result, so I'm going to do it again. It has to be whatever your printer can do. So if you were going to do a gold um, kind of a logo, you'd need special printer and special ink. If you're just going to do basic stuff, red, yellow, blue, green, black, then your everyday printer will do the job. All right, so I'm going to try and get the rest of this little tiny bits of black out of there to clean up the edge of this stripe, and uh, I'm done with this one. You know, smooth it with the with the thousand and uh, logo and clear coat. Beauty. I'll tell you, it's kind of painful. Is thinking about the amount of time I spent taping these stripes off and then hitting the body with 60 grit paper. Um, I'm noticing that my coat of white paint is wearing off faster than the red, possibly due to several different factors. Um, so wherever I'm hitting it to get the red off, it goes right down to the wood. And in some spots, like here's a good example where the stripe is. You can see that it wears the stripes down and still leaves piles where the red triangles were. Um, so, you know, in a manner of speaking, that's authentic because that's what's happening. Uh, and if I was trying to make a counterfeit, that would be wrong. But as it's just supposed to be relict, well, that's what would have happened given the paint job that I gave it. So I don't really think it's, a, I don't really think it's wrong. And one way or another, it's just going to look worn out. What I might do, though, to restore the sort of authenticity of this particular area of wear to match the pictures is to just restore the white paint on top of the wood just to make it more white leave some exposed wood right along the edge here where it would have been exposed wood and then uh, just do you know the white in this area because it just, I don't know, it just looks a little confusing. And I'll know if I, when I put some white paint on there, I'll brush it on, I guess. Uh, if that doesn't look right, I can always sand it off again. Um, I'm also going for the, uh, this relic area. That's where he's palm sliding his volume knob. 
and then there's a strip here and a strip up here uh, where he would stick uh, a, a twisted piece of duct tape or, or fold it over and then put uh, guitar picks on it. So that was his way of doing that. Um, I don't know if you can tell how pink the white areas are getting, so uh, I've discovered that uh, by hitting that with the magic eraser, that pink goes away. And uh, it does so without actually going all the way down to the wood as well. So, good enough. Um, I'm working right now on the belly cut um, relic, so there's going to be some right along the edge. I want this strip to be sort of rough all the way across, uh, partially because that's the part I'm going to be looking at most often. Um, the, this relic here, I'm out of frame, oh I am. Um, the picture I showed before shows um, most of the wear is around this surface and goes all the way down, in fact, to the uh, tremolo cavity. And then there's more of it out here, which is probably buckle rash or whatever they call it. So uh, I'm going to keep hitting this area and try and get this to wear down. What's happening, though, is I'm predominantly getting this area. And because I'm using 60, I'm getting a lot of fine scratches that I'm going to have to get out with the 2 and 400. So you know, it's no small amount of work. But anyway, I'm still f f feeling pretty pleased with the way this is looking. So we'll just see how, uh, we'll see how it goes. See if I can get this pink out of my hand. 